Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here, welcome back to another Anthem video. And today I want to bring you a build, in fact, two builds for the Ranger. I've been uploading build guides for all the other Javelins, at least like initial builds that you can test out in the open beta. As mentioned, these will obviously be far more in depth when the full game launches and we can of course pair these with a full suite of masterworks, legendaries and components. But for the purposes of the open demo, these are things you can kind of jump in, mess around with and have some fun with and of course get good results. And the Ranger is the last one I need to cover. So if you do enjoy this, then like we super appreciated and be sure to comment down below if you have any questions. Now to begin with, the Ranger in truth took a little bit longer to actually find a build that I was super happy with because some of the other Javelins, they have slightly more flashy builds. So for example, the Colossus, when you deploy the flamethrower and the lightning coil, everything explodes in front of you and it looks pretty badass. And it's also of course very effective. The Storm, when you freeze everything and you throw fireballs in there, it explodes, looks pretty epic. And of course the Interceptor, when you poison things with the Venom Bomb and you just drop kick them with Tempest Strike, it's pretty badass. Whereas the Ranger is a little bit more reserved. It has some great potential. And in fact, the Ranger is probably the highest single target damage javelin out there. So it's very powerful. It just doesn't look as flashy as the other ones. However, that being said, I've basically split these builds into two different sections. The first one is ability related. Meanwhile, the second one leans more into one of your weapon choices and tries to make it so that, that weapon is as powerful as possible. So let's start with abilities. For this first one, you're going to want the Frost Grenade, which quite simply, when you throw it, it of course explodes and freezes targets in an area. This is a good AoE primer. You do of course have the Flame Grenades too, and of course you can pair these depending on your targets. But the reason we use the Frost Grenade is because not only does it prime enemies, but it also keeps them in place, which is incredibly important for our second ability. Because the second ability is actually Pulse Blast. And this is actually quite interesting because both myself and 269 were sort of doing some tests on this on stream. And it's an ability that, I'll be honest, initially I kind of wrote off because it doesn't feel that exciting to use. When you have something like the Seeking Missile where you fire it out and it homes in and explodes on the target, it looks pretty cool, instantly satisfying. However, the Pulse Blast has an additional use to it in that because it doesn't just home in on the general target location, you can actually target exactly where you want this to go. You can also crit with this ability. So when it comes to combos, if you actually charge this up and aim at an enemy's head or an enemy's weak point, this is where you get the damage. So on paper, if you look at them side by side, the Pulse Blast doesn't look that impressive. It doesn't look that powerful. And even when you see it in gameplay, you might not think much of it. However, when you actually do pair it in gameplay with an enemy weak point, then you can start seeing some decent numbers on this. You can start seeing numbers in excess of a thousand, which is actually pretty good for a you know low level ability that recharges pretty fast, this is very nice. And of course, don't forget to factor in that the Ranger's combo effect is that when you pull off a combo and you detonate it, you deal a large amount of bonus damage to a single target. So whereas the Colossus explodes in AoE damage, the Ranger is all about that single target damage. So you might not be out there, you know, destroying waves and groups of enemies in huge explosions, but what you can be doing is picking off those stronger targets and focusing on doing big damage to those and taking them down incredibly quickly. It's great taking down turrets, taking down those heavy scars, taking down any of those like bigger enemies. You get the idea. This is essentially gonna be all about getting big damage numbers in that one single hit. So essentially you run out, you freeze the enemies, you charge up Pulse Blast and assuming you are fighting an enemy that has a exposed weak point, then of course you use this to shoot them in that and you get the combo effect on top. Now again, some enemies are of course easy to hit, but for enemies like say the big heavy scars with shields, the reason Frost Grenade is good is because of course it keeps them held still so you can then spin around to the back of them and of course hit those tanks. So these two abilities combined are actually incredibly potent. Of course, on top of that, you will want your support ability. In this situation, I always run with Muster Point just simply because it's good damage output for you and your team. So if you're sitting down there shooting with your guns, then you can just drop it down, everyone can group up, and it's good again for, you know, boss damage, high enemy damage, things like that. But if you do want to have something slightly more, you know, support focused, then you can throw in the bubble shield. But essentially, that is the main crux for this build. For your weapon choice, you can really pick whatever you want because this one doesn't heavily depend on the weapons. You literally go out, freeze your enemies, and then shoot them with Pulse Blast. And because it recharges quite quickly, you can be doing this pretty much all the time. However, if we then switch over to the second build, this one is a little bit unconventional. And the reason for that is Anthem is a very ability heavy game. If you take a completely opposite game, something like Destiny, I know I don't necessarily draw comparisons, but that is a game that is a shooter first with supplementary abilities. Meanwhile, Anthem is a game that is essentially an ability usage game first and the guns merely supplement your gameplay. And for that reason, you tend to get a lot of your action, a lot of your damage out of your abilities and your guns are then just kind of there to fill in the gaps. But this build specifically focuses around the Devastator Sniper Rifle. If you guys have used it, you'll know standalone, it's a very powerful sniper rifle. You charge it up, it fires out an explosive shot and already it's very powerful. However, 
However, thanks to the Ranger and his ability to have access to all four elements, you can actually get something useful out of this. So for your first ability under the Assault Launcher, you'll actually take the Venom Darts. Again, another ability that initially I kind of wrote off because on the surface it doesn't seem that powerful. But what this is good at is quickly applying the Acid Status. And if you've seen my video on the elements, you'll know that if an enemy has an Acid Debuff applied to them, they take more damage. So you can essentially look at it as a damage boost for your guns. You fire this in your enemies and then you shoot them and you deal more damage when they have that applied. Of course, on top of that, your other ability is the frag grenade. This is simply to detonate them. So again, if you want some nice single target damage, you can throw the frag grenade on a primed enemy and explode. So I did initially try using the sticky grenade because on paper, it does seem to have slightly higher single target damage, but because sometimes it homes in on the wrong enemy, sometimes you hit something you don't want to. I found the frag grenade to be sort of more like one size fits all and it just generally speaking explodes in a large area. So even if you don't necessarily hit them directly, chances are you're probably gonna detonate the combo. So frag grenade tends to be a pretty safe option. And of course, in this one, your support ability has to be muster point because again, you're going for that big damage stack. So essentially the way it works is you go out, you find an enemy, you prime it with the venom darts. And then if you are using your guns, you can then just simply shoot them for more damage than you would normally do. If you want to detonate, you'll just simply throw in a frag grenade. And of course, when you line up your devastator shots, this is where it really counts. If you find something slightly stronger with a shield, you will of course want to drop the shield first, then prime it drop down your master point, sit inside that, and then pull off a devastator shot for some pretty insane numbers. And also additional thing to note, multiple master points can stack and they can also combine with things like the Inceptor's target beacon. So what we actually did in one of our runs on the stronghold, we ran through on hard mode and against the final boss, we had one of our teammates throw a target beacon on the boss and believe it or not, it does actually work. It's just hidden inside the actual model of the enemy. And we then have three rangers put down three master points and then pulled off an insane devastator shot for some pretty big numbers. Unfortunately, I couldn't actually pair this with a Venom Dart because it didn't seem to apply the status enough. So for the time being, that was the highest number we've been able to pull off so far. But either way, for those of you guys that maybe want to be a little bit more weapon focused, then this is a build you could definitely try out. It doesn't necessarily, again, seem that flashy on paper, but it does yield great results. So that's it for the time being. A couple of builds for the Ranger, a couple of things you can mess around with in the open demo. Of course, as mentioned, once the game launches, I will have much more in-depth build guides for you guys going over lots of really cool things, factory and masterworks and legendaries. But for the time being, this is something to play with. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to check out some more awesome stuff from us here at Arix Gaming, then you should definitely try to catch 269 and Paradise Central streaming six days a week. You can find a link to the multi-stream in the description box down below. They play a wide range of games. And what's more, we also have the end game store. By watching their streams, you earn currency and you can redeem that currency on the end game store for really cool prizes. Those can range from things like games, comics, and figures, all the way up to controllers, capture cards, and even consoles. So definitely drop by and become part of the community. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, then make sure you're subscribed and be sure to click on that little bell icon to turn on notifications so you don't miss our next upload. You can watch more videos by clicking on the options here. But once again, thanks very much for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.